you, Sandra. Hello and welcome to the featured designer series on Pattern Review. I am Deepika, founder of PatternReview.com, an online sewing community, which is for makers like you and me. And in today's uh, series, we have with us our guest, Ray Hoekstra from Made by Ray Pattern Company. Yay! Hello. <laughs> Uh, a little bit about why I'm doing uh, these interviews with independent pattern designers is because I've always felt that um, pattern designers put in so much of themselves into their company. So um, it's kind of fun to go behind the scenes and enjoy their journey and kind of get to know them a little bit more. And also, if you are not um, familiar with their patterns, maybe you'd like to give their patterns uh, a try. As you know, on Pattern Review, we sell uh, patterns from over 75 different pattern companies. And uh, so you can buy this pattern there. We also um, ship copy shop prints for the digital patterns if you don't want to tape, which can be a little meditative process. But um, we like giving options. You can also purchase these patterns from Ray's website, Made by Ray. And I will include all of the links down below in the description box. And now that I've all of the boring stuff out of the way, let's meet Ray. Hi, <laughs> Ray. Welcome. Hi, Deepika. It's so good to talk to you again. <laughs> it's so good to talk to you too. Um, so first, I wanted to thank you for giving us your time and uh, talking to me. And uh, I really do appreciate it. Uh, 100%. I'm happy to be here. And thank you for carrying the patterns. It's so awesome to see oh, it like kind of go through the pattern review community. And it's so much fun to see what everybody makes over there. So I love well, it. I've been I've been a fan of your work from kind of like before when my daughter actually I've been following you um, from the blogging days. And um, <laughs> yeah. when my daughter was born, remember that geranium dress? <laughs> phenomenon oh my goodness I have um followed all your children's uh, journey not in a creepy stalkery way but like um you know as a fellow mom and um I don't know it's just been kind of fun so when you launched the adult size patterns I had to reach out and see if right. uh you know we can we can partner so welcome uh, I'm going to jump right okay, so in we, with our... Wait, hold ahead. on, I want to stop you. When was that? Like, how long ago was that, do you think? Oh, Dia is 13. Dia okay. Is 13, so that was... Um, 2011. I yeah, probably started... When was Clementine born, your daughter? See, I know even your kids' names. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, she was born in 20, uh, 2009. Um, and Geranium came out, but I was making Geranium before the pattern came out. But I think the pattern maybe came out in... 2012 or 13 I think it might have been 2012 does that sound okay. about right so I definitely know off you before Clementine was born okay yeah yeah so yeah, yeah even before my daughter so I was right even before my daughter was born so yeah it's nice to it's nice That's to have this history I love it I love it and I love that I love that people feel that connection too. Like they, a lot of people have gone through that same sort of journey along with me of parenting and sewing for their kids and then sewing yeah. for themselves. And that's just really fun to see. I love it when oh. people reach out and tell me that. Awesome. So um, I'm going to start with a loaded question because why not, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> tell me a little bit about your why. What is your philosophy behind Made by Ray Patterns? Um, you know, I know that you started your business kind of like from the blogging days mm -hmm. but I'd love to know what is what is your why for then and now like why do you continue why is made by Ray like what's happening now for you to uh, be invested in it tell sure. us a little bit about that um so I mean the big thing for me is I just I love sewing my own clothes um, and I've loved sewing my own clothes for a really long time. Um, and when I, you know, when I started sewing, a lot of that was with like tissue patterns, you know, big four kind of thing. I think a lot of people have gone through that sort of journey. Um, and, you know, just 
for me, a lot of my motivation was always trying to create something unique and colorful and fun. I have a sort of like a whimsical um, aesthetic. And, you know, when you can't see or find the things that you want in the mall or, <laughs> you know, in a catalog, which is probably, you know, when I, what I was um, working off of when I was in high school and college, um, and then a young teacher, um, you know, it was just fun to be able to use these sort of templates to kind of express myself. And I just, I find sewing clothes to be so delightful and fun. And um, I find using uh, the sort of big four patterns to not be delightful and fun. <laughs> um, and I think just sort of going through a lot of that, those pitfalls um, really led me to think like, okay, I, I want to do this better. And I think um, that was how I taught too. When I was a science and math teacher, it was always about like trying to find better ways to, to learn things or teach things. Um, and I see my patterns very much as doing that. I'm trying to teach people how to sew um, and I want them to love it. And I think, you know, removing those things that just really frustrate you or um, in some cases, I think the assumptions that patterns assume that you already know when you pick it up. Um, I'm trying to help people kind of start from the beginning and learn things um, as they go. Um, and so they're very much, you know, teaching patterns, instructional patterns, and very much thinking about it in terms of like, how can I make this like easy, fun, simple, basic, um, so that, you know, if all somebody does is make a million trillium dresses and that's all they ever do, it's still fun for them. But if they use it as a stepping stone to more complicated or um, advanced patterns or different pattern designers who, you know, incorporate more, um, you know, techniques and Technique, skills, skills and things yeah. that are a little bit more advanced. So like that, skill building. Yeah. And that, you know, and I just love that when people are like, well, you know, this was the first thing I ever made and it was so great. And I had this really great experience. And um, I just want that piece to be solid for people so that when they approach sewing for the first time or when they come back to it after leaving it for a while, it gives them sort of like a boost of confidence and and delight. So that's amazing. Yeah. Well, and I I'm guess glad. I mean the second part of the question is why do I keep doing it? I, I still love sewing my own clothes. <laughs> and it's like, I haven't tired of it. Yes. In fact, sometimes I wish I could just do that instead of like making the patterns, although the patterns propel, you know, it's like, it's sort of a cycle, right? Like, right, right, right. Um, you know, having the pattern and then sharing it and then other people want to make it. It's like, of course, I want to make this for you too. So, um, but yeah, that's the piece that keeps me going is that I just, I really do still love making my clothes and continue to wear and make my clothes um, all the time. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, so are you uh, drafting the patterns yourself? Do you have um, some tie-ups with somebody who drafts for you or do you do everything uh, when you come up with a new pattern? Um, well, I draft my own patterns. Um, you know, I did sort of teach myself how to do that from like books and um, I didn't go to school for it, but um, also just the experience of sewing with patterns teaches you a lot. Um, yeah, but, absolutely. And you your know. patterns are really well drafted. The reviews kind of speak for themselves. <laughs> Thank and, you. Uh, yeah, it's it's great. What I love about your patterns um, is, I I don't know, like they want to make me, they make me want to sew. They make me want to like, oh, I have that fun fabric, especially that. Um, I think my first pattern, which I used of yours, was the geranium dress mm -hmm. for children. And yeah. I have made so many of those in Liberty of London, in a border print, in um, cheap fabric from Joann's, like in double gauze, and it goes on and on. It was so quick. Yeah. It was like, you know, as a new mom who was also a working mom, I just didn't have too much time. But yeah. I, I wanted to be able to make clothes which look modern. Mm -hmm. and easy to sew and they work in a variety of different fabrics so I think um 
that was that was the OG for me. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a through line, I think, for my patterns as they tend to be very basic and simple. Sometimes they'll have fun extras that you can add on if you want or that are optional. But um, but yeah, when you're a mom, you have you have to do things quickly. I mean, yeah. I still have never made a pair of jeans or I mean, I watched with so much envy all this jean making happen online and like the bra making and like and it was just like I would love to do that someday. Maybe I will, <laughs> but Maybe I've never done it. Never. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But it's just one of those things. It's like I just haven't had the time for it. Um, and so a lot of times I'm trying to make things that um, they aren't just like, you know, a half hour, but they can be done in a long afternoon or a weekend and then you're finished and you don't have this thing kind of like hanging over your head. It's like it that feels very satisfying to me to be able to sew it in a relatively short period of time. <laughs> yeah, I bet other people felt like this too, but when you launched the adult patterns, women patterns, um, I was so excited uh -oh. and because now all these dresses I've sewn, especially the, the trillium dress was mm -hmm. kind of a spin off. I feel like on the, on the geranium dress for adults, I'm like, no, I can make ratchet clothes. It was a hundred percent. Yeah. And that's, um, that it, those two patterns were developed very much in tandem. Um, and they have some elements that are the same, you know, the little U shape cutout you can do is on both patterns and, um, you can very much make a mini me version with those two patterns. So I yeah. was really heavily into that when she was little. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so is that like going into from kids patterns to adult patterns, um was that why you tell us a little bit about why you like what led to you creating um adult size patterns um and is well, that still is that your focus now or are you still designing for kids I um I do primarily design for myself now I definitely still sew a lot for my kids um but I mainly sew um well, I have a 10 year old, so I sew parsley pants and flashback tees for him because they're so quick <laughs> and fast. And then I can do like fun prints and yeah. fabrics like that. Um, but the, I think what's happened is, and I think, you know, you may have seen this evolve online too. It's like, I post more as my kids get older and they don't necessarily want, want to be, to, right? Of, want to be you know, seen. They don't want to be. They want, you don't they want their to be photographed. Yeah. yeah, and it's like, and that's fine. Yeah. I love that. Like they have their own identities yeah. and lives. I don't want them to feel like they're wrapped up in mine. Um, and so, you know, as that's evolved, I've been able to, you know, I've shared more of the things that I'm making for myself, right? Um, and I think a big part of just even moving, pivoting into women's is that I still was sewing a lot of things for myself and it made sense if I'm sharing and sewing those things to create patterns for them, even though the process of drafting and grading an adult pattern was infinitely more complicated than, you know, doing children's, um, you know, that once I was able to make that leap um, and, you know, have those like blocks and you know, templates to work off of, then, you know, then I could continue doing that. So, um, so yeah, I think a lot of people find me through children's patterns or have found me or followed me through children's patterns. And then as that sort of evolved into an adult pattern business, um, have done a lot of the adult sewing too. I don't think that I will stop doing children's like I still have children's designs that I want of to course. do yeah yeah and so it, you know I never I never think to myself like oh I'm only doing adult patterns now but yeah for the last I was I think the last children's pattern we released was in 2015 <laughs> so I mean that's nine years ago and then we did the geranium expansion pack in 2018 so and that was just the expansion pack on dreams. Yeah, right. It's like, you know, it's been a long time. I've been primarily releasing adult patterns since then. So that has become a primary focus. Um, and I again, I like that, that you, it's also, um, it's a building block because you, people already have that pattern. So you launched the expansion packs and I love that. I, I love, I'm a big fan of pattern books and expansion packs because you know, you spend all this time fitting a pattern yeah. and why not use it again with different design details added to them? You know? Yes, 100%. So, 
Yeah. And that's also informed a lot of my, some of my patterns have been expansions, like secret expansions, like Jade, for instance, is a t-shirt that has yes, four sleeve that. length, but you can put it on Isla, which is a knit dress, which has the armhole. They're compatible. I drafted those two patterns to be the same. Um, so there, you can interchange and mix and match. And then the pattern I just came out with in December, Garnet, is built on the ruby block and those pieces are interchangeable as well so people who have ruby and know that fits will know that garnet will fit and so you can use those pieces too together so it's like i i did the expansion packs for trillium geranium and then some of my patterns themselves are kind of like uh stealthy expansion packs <laughs> that's awesome that, i love hearing that um okay so this let's dive into a little bit you mentioned that you love to sew uh for yourself um do you primarily use made by ray patterns for your own sewing and <laughs> which is the one pattern you keep going back to you've made the most of okay um yeah so yes i do primarily make my own patterns <laughs> um there's nothing wrong with that it's... It, it's just like i mean that is the reason you started made by yeah. ray patterns right but I do buy a lot of other patterns from other pattern designers and make, um, you know, my friend Meg of Celebr Liberated, I've made a bunch of her patterns. Um, I just bought the Persephone pants and cut those out. You know, it's fun to do other patterns because, yes. it, you know, it's like I'm not going to be able to make every single pattern I need. And so, you know, it's lovely to be able to use other people's patterns and um, try other things out too. So, oh, Friday, I just made the Sherpa pullover from Friday Pattern Company. Yeah, um, yeah. Too, their, uh, patterns, too. their patterns are good too. Yeah. So anyway, I've done, you know, I have made a lot of other pattern designers pattern patterns. Um, but yeah, I primarily sew my own. What one have I made the most of? Oh man, that's such a hard question. Partly it when I have developed- to be one. It could be a couple yeah. of different ones. <laughs> I make it easy for you. I yeah, no, I know. I think um, I've probably sewn the most trilliums just because that's been the sort of classic and I've made so many spin off versions of that. Um, but the basic patterns tend to be the ones that I wear more like Jade, it's a t shirt and, um, you know, especially in summertime, like Cleo and Rose. Um, so Rose is a trouser pattern and Cleo is a skirt pattern. Um, you know, I wear those a lot and have made a ton of those as well. Um, so and then this time of year, I wear a lot of citrine because that's the cardigan. And so I'm layering things. Um, so when I'm not wearing things I've knitted, then I'm wearing this sort of knit cardigan. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's so hard to pick a favorite child. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I'm gonna pick one for you. I think in okay. your case, it's probably Trillium. It's yeah. also your first adult child. That, it's that, true. So, that sounds true. really weird. <laughs> you mean though <laughs> I, I know i know i hope people are watching i also know what i mean oh my, my adult my first adult pattern child. <laughs> first adult pattern child. oh my god I didn't even uh, laughing. um okay so um i thought we might exchange some numbers what is the best selling pattern for you on your website and then i'm going to share some pattern review data okay um you want adult patterns or overall everything? Well, I mean, since why don't you tell me overall and then adult? Okay. So I was surprised to discover this year that geranium blows all of my other patterns out of the water. I did not realize it because when I was doing my analytics, that pattern comes in in three chunks. It comes in in the zero to five chunk because it has yeah. a small size range. It has a big kid size range, six to 12 years. And then it also has the expansion pack. And so each one of those pieces was not as big as the adult ones. And then I realized, no, you actually have to add those up because people yeah, buying zero to five and six to 12 are buying the same pattern. Yeah. So that one actually was my number one last year. And it probably has been in past years and I just didn't realize it. And I was just like, whoa, that's crazy. That's not what I expected um, because my number one, adult pattern so next in line would be trillium um and that one has always been a really strong performer it hasn't always been number one like every year i do my sort of yearly analytics and you know sometimes rose has been 
um, at the top of the heap. Um, yeah, so it just sort of depends. But yeah, I think um, Trillium was the top seller last year for adult. And then Emerald was second. Um, I wrote these down. Clio was next. And then Luna and Gemma. Those are my top five adults. So Trillium, Emerald, Clio, Luna, and Gemma um, were my top five selling adult. But Geranium was like number one. I was like, oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah. And then so for all of you watching Geranium Dress, we only carry the adult patterns on pattern review. But mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to include a link for Geranium Dress. If you have children or to sew for, you need to make this dress. It's a game changer. And it's so comfortable. I'm going to include a link. Uh, it's a bestseller and you'll see why. Mm -hmm. And so on pattern review, I think um, because you renamed Trillium, it didn't show up. So I probably needed to add that up. Um, but for us, it's Emerald, Gemma, and Rose Pants. Love it. Yeah. Yes. So that's, um. Uh, it's always fun to go and look uh, at the data. It's, yeah. you know like especially historical data so it's kind of fun same yeah and I love yeah. how it changes but the thing I find kind of fun and delightful about it is it's always different and it just sort of depends on what people are making and yeah. you know who's seeing what other people are doing and sharing and um and yeah that's so like that piece I just love so much it's like people I don't pay for advertising you know it's like I don't advertise um I don't buy Facebook ads you know it's like I I'm too small of a business. I, I can't do that. But it's amazing to me, the word of mouth and people sharing it. And it's like sort of overwhelming sometimes. It's like, I feel so grateful to people for, you know, taking the time to like take the pictures and share it. And it's like, that's how people find out about it. And mm -hmm. I love that. That's like- I love organic growth. That's where, that's how um, Pattern Review has also grown organically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, it really, it's a journey. I'm a journey versus destination person. Mm -hmm. um, even when I go hiking, which I haven't gone in a long time. Uh, but yeah, I love the journey. I love, I love the journey. I love the, the steadiness of it. I love the sustainability of it and, um, you know, and uh, scalability to be able to scale in the way you're ready to scale is important. Mm -hmm. um, so if um i also talked about now that you've talked about all these patterns you make do you have a show and tell we all love show and tell yes. all right yeah, yes. and we're gonna talk a little bit about what you're wearing and what i'm wearing in a little bit but i want to see because that goes into our next question a little bit all right sounds let's good see, let's see let's see all the clothes you've made and you want to show us okay so here i'll back up my camera just a little bit hopefully this will we'll see how it, what i can um I can make. Okay, so Trillium is one of my first ones here, is my border print Trillium. I love it. And it's double gauze, isn't it? Or is this your own print? Didn't you collab with... Um, with no, this, is, this one is not my own print. This is okay. a, um, a, Nani, a Nani Eero, um, so it's Coca, yes, which I... Did you know that it's because of you that I discovered Nani Eero? I really? Remember, yes, it's because of you such a game changer like the it's just so comfortable to wear and i think that's many of the trillium i have made recently and wear and recent years have been double gauze because it's such a nice fabric it sounds like it's really hard to work with like people no, are really intimidated by the word gauze and i get that but um it's so stable to work with and then it just re results in this like super comfortable like hashtag secret pajamas kind of garment which i love so um, and then this one I made this year out of Merchant and Mills linen. Oh, so, I love that. I love how bright yeah. and cheery it is. And so, so it has the same shirring. And then the other thing I've been really getting into lately is incorporating hand stitching. And this oh, is actually in the pattern instructions too, is like a note about this. But just, you know, it's so easy to hand stitch, um, especially the steps that I find kind of hateful on the sewing machine, like hemming. Yes. Um, and that also like turns them into something that I can be doing when my kids are running around or while I'm, you know, listening to my son practice violin for Suzuki, you know, those sorts of things. It's like, I can do this while I'm doing other things with my family. So I kind of love that. Um, so that's Trillium. This one's Emerald. So this is the OG Emerald. It's a little wrinkly yet from the wash, but 
Um, this is also a cotton linen blend, I think. It has. And so, this is a great pattern, I think, for people who are scared of sewing on the bias. Yeah. I think this is, isn't this a great pattern? Such a teaching kind of get your feet wet and just try out sewing on the bias. Yeah. You don't right? see a whole lot of bias um, caught here, um, patterns. And I think this one's, it's yeah. so simple that I think you can kind of start with it and um get some confidence with bias sewing which is which is really nice so okay let's see I'm trying to think of what oh you mentioned rose i didn't bring my that's okay my, i just moved my studio so a lot of my stuff was in boxes um let's see here um this is my cleo skirt i have two of them on the hanger i wear this one all the time such a this, fun print it's like a it almost has like it's three-dimensional there's like little threads this part of the what original. Tell us about that fabric. This was Luminous by Anna Maria Horner. Um, I think the most similar thing to it now, this came out, I think, in 2016, 2015, maybe. I would say the Warp and Weft fabrics by Alexia um, Marcelle Big for Ruby Star Society are probably the most similar to these. They have that sort of like woven, they have the same kind of lightweight. Like a 3D. Um, Is, do, are they also 3D, like a little bit or no? Uh, some of them are, yeah, like they have like, almost like it looks em I don't, embroidered isn't the right word, but the way they're woven, they have like little patterns that are woven in. This is new um, to me fabric. I'm going to have to check this out. Yeah. And then I've really been getting into like um, turning my scraps into garments lately. I'm actually uh, teaching a workshop in Maine this summer about it. Um, but this Clio skirt is entirely made of scraps, which I had a lot of fun That's doing. Wonderful. It's a couple of gauze, linen. Wonderful. And uh, yeah, lots of colors there. This is a, a Gemma tank, kind of at the same um, idea, just like using, I started with sort of like a log cabin quilt block. Yeah. And, then just off of that. Um, and then let's see, I, I brought with me, um, okay, so this is Ruby, which is the um, pattern. This is like a very good beginner pattern that I kind of um, when people ask me, like, what's the first one I should make? Uh, this is very much like a very good, like, skill builder basic um, pattern. It has like a yoke at the top. And then it's the also a great stash buster. Yes, you can, use, exactly. you can use different fabrics for, you know, for the yoke. And oh, that's great. I, it's so wearable. And then the pattern that we just released in December is a square neck equivalent to that. Um, and it has I swear I didn't know about this, but look at what I'm wearing. I'm wearing a square neck. Oh my gosh, I know it's so on trend. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, Garnet is basically a sibling pattern to Ruby and the pieces are interchangeable. So people have been asking me for years to make a sleeve for Ruby. Um, and so this is kind of the answer to that is you this can is so garnet. smart. It's so smart. <laughs> Not only do you get a sleeve, you get a square neck. You get a yeah. whole new pattern and then you can use it with Ruby. I yes. love it. Yeah, it's great. And then the technique with the yoke is the sort of burrito method lined. So if you start with a sort of like beginner method, which is there's no lining here, it's very simple and straightforward. And then you can kind of graduate into um, burrito method, but then you can use it with the Ruby pattern. I mean, it's like you can use the techniques with both patterns, you can use the pieces with both patterns. So it's like a great, um, a great way to sort of build off of that one. Um, this is the one I made, um, which is a ruby garnet. Oh, it's you have hard. such an eye for print. I have to tell you, it is. <laughs> it's definitely a talent. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So this one is the ruby yoke with the garnet body and sleeves, and then I did the the garnet technique on the yoke, which it's curved. It's so dark that you almost can't see the little curve here, but this one's not square neck, so. so um, yeah, that's the combination. Oh, and Garnet also has these um, tucks, which is one of the options. It's like an extra that you can do where you add the like um, tucks. That's such a cute body. design detail. And I've made a few like all in one fabric or you can do two different fabrics. So there's a lot of options. This one's actually a voile and double gauze on the top. So super comfortable on top too. Um, yeah, I choose a lot of yellow. I was realizing that as I grabbed these samples, I'm like, everything I have is yellow. Um, and then this is Citrine. I mentioned it, so I thought I'd just bring 
um, an example, it has sort of like a bell gathered sleeve. Um, so the one thing I, I like about this is that any of my patterns that have a sleeve, it's hard to put a sweater over top of them when it's colder. And oh, so yeah. if you have a sweater that has a larger sleeve at the end, and I was discovering that with some of the knitted patterns I was making is that they had this like big, you know, kind of balloon sleeve, and then I could wear them over the things it's that so I comfortable. This is a new discovery for me too. I just <laughs> yeah. finished, uh, you know, uh, a knitting sweat, a knitted sweater, and that had, uh, what's it called? A balloon sleeve. Yeah. It's a balloon yeah, and there's another name hate, for it that I'm forgetting. Like bishop. Bishop. Yes, it's that's bishop the other word. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. So, and it's just so comfortable. I hate tight sleeves. I know. And it just, it's. I'm like, I can't believe how comfortable this is. Yeah. And I'm, like, I'm gonna just like puff out all of my sleeves now <laughs> yeah you know I don't like tight yeah yeah uh, but yeah so oh, thank you so much this is so much fun to see all the clothes <laughs> you know yeah, it's like I love um I love all the prints and colors you've chosen and um hopefully for those of us uh, watching this this will be inspirational to dig out some of those you know fabrics and sew up something it's not gonna take too long really fun yeah um so you mentioned that you recently had a, a studio move. Do you, how are you feeling about that? Tell us a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, I, um, yeah, I was literally, well, I have stuff in boxes still. I was literally still moving things yesterday. Um, but yeah, I am now completely out of the studio that I was in for uh, 12, 10, 10 oh and a half years, I guess. So yeah. it was a long time that I was in that space. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm still kind of in this like uh, haze of like what is happening even. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I hate it <laughs> and I love it. I mean, <laughs> it's hard, you know, I feel tired. It's like, you know, I kind of feel burned out from all of it. But, um, but you know, I love a shakeup. <laughs> and if there's one thing moving does, it really, it really shakes things up, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think that's been really good. It's been, I, I actually just wrote a post about this on my blog last week. Um, and it's been good to kind of evaluate like, okay, what am I doing and why am I doing this? Um, the process of like packing up all of these things, like all of the samples. And I mean, it was just like, I could not believe how many samples I have, how many boxes of samples I still have. Wow. And I'm like, oh my God, I got rid of some of these. It's insane. Um, and then I had a studio sale because I, you know, I designed fabric for five years. Um, and so I sold off a bunch of that yardage. It was like, it, it feels really good to kind of sit back and say, okay, here's all these things. It's a way to kind of like view your body of work, but then also kind of say like, why am I still doing this? You know? Mm -hmm. Um, and I think one of the things I've always felt very strongly about in owning my own business is that I always want to be able to exit. <laughs> I have always had an exit strategy. Um, and part of that is because I, I just never want to feel like I have to do it. I always want to be doing it because I love it. And, and I think it's telling that I've done it for 15 years. Like, it's like, okay, well then it is something you really do love doing. You know, there is some momentum and inertia that happens with business. You just keep doing what you were doing. Um, but it's so good to have those moments where you're like, okay, do I still really want to do this? And, um, and while I have, I definitely have downsized a lot in the last few years. Um, you know, the pandemic was really, I think for so many people, just kind of, um, impetus for. I like that word having... shake up. I like yeah, that a lot. Shake up. Yeah. I'm a it's words cool. and phrases person. So, and I love learning. Mm -hmm. and, but I think I, for me, learning is through experience, either my own or hearing like stories like yours. Um, I like a shake up. I like I like hearing that, and I like seeing that how we can just pivot. If something's yeah. not working, don't you want to change it? You know, yeah. that's also something I I realized. Sorry to go off on a tangent, but no, it's okay. I, I that's love that word. So interesting. Um, <laughs> I, I interviewed. Um, you know, an amazing woman, uh, Suzanne Melody Smith, and she said something like on hand sewing or like fixing or, or mending. 
and this was years ago and she's like well I said oh I hate I hate um, fixing things you know I'd rather make a dress or something from scratch rather than having to fix that button and all of course like I've come a long way uh, from then and now I'm actually teaching a mending workshop at the library can you believe it I love it so much um, so she said to me if well I don't understand why if something is broken don't you want to fix it and she asked me this question in such a honest and genuine way and I'm like her voice is in my head it's something <laughs> like if I make a mistake while knitting instead of just going on with it I just rip back and redo it because mm -hmm. I want to fix it like it's very simple if it's broken don't you want to fix it <laughs> so I like it I love it I just thought I'd, I'd share that a little um with you not to kind of go off on a tangent sorry <laughs> that's great I feel like it is interesting how people will say things to you at like the kind of perfect time in your life and those words will stay with you and um yeah and then it's just it becomes this sort of new thing for you in your you know yeah. creative journey that's yeah. awesome so um okay so the studio move is done and um Tell us a little bit about some of your other interests besides sewing. I know some of them, but I want to hear from you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, I I really got into knitting during the pandemic. Um, as you can see, I wear yes. a lot of things. Um, and yeah, I would say that's probably been my primary creative outlet. Um, although I do a lot of jigsaw puzzles. And oh, wow, uh, really? Uh, yes, that's also I love I love it, especially during colder months. I just feel like it's kind of like the perfect, you know, calm and calm, peaceful activity. Um, and then the thing I just got into this past month, I signed up for the miniature rhino pattern club and she makes what is like that it's hand stitching samplers. Um, oh, shoot, I was going to grab it and like it's like in the other room, I would have to go get it. but. Um, it's a, it's like a little hand sewn. I am going to go get it. I'm sorry. Go get it, get it. It's fine. Okay. So we're keeping this real. I'm not going to edit this and we're just gonna wait for Ray to get back. But how fun is she? It's like, <laughs> I'm loving this. I mean, I know this is going to be longer than what I, uh, normally do this, but I'm it's sorry. so fun. It's so fun. But you know what? It's, it's so fun. Oh, look okay. at that. So she sends out these sort of pre-printed, I don't know if you can see where it's I can printed. See, I can see everything. I can see all the details. And it's like a kit. Yeah. And I gave it to myself for Christmas. And um, and then she sends the, the thread and instructions. It comes with like a video instruction. She's having an online meetup this week that I'm going to. And then you sort of stitch along with this little sampler. It's so meditative and fun. And I love the colors she picked for this and the whole bandana. She has a whole story with a bandana motif. And oh, anyway, wow. it's Jessica Marquez. Um, she wrote a book. Actually, she does a lot of visible mending. Um, she has a whole book on it. And um, and her oh, brand is called Miniature, Miniature Rhino. And uh, she does these little samplers that she sends out you subscribe to it basically for a year and then i'm gonna get another one i think i can't remember what the increments are but you get them throughout the year so by the yeah. time you're kind of done with one then you get another one it's a different color and pattern and um yeah so i had taken a workshop with her at squam um which i know you and i have talked about um but I'm going to it <laughs> yes are you really oh my gosh you're yes so oh i told you i signed up already I signed uh, up before it. I sent an email to you. Oh, that's right. That's yes. right. I forgot. Okay. But anyway, she, she teaches at Squam. Um, she's one of, they have amazing instructors there. She is one of, I don't know if she will be there when you're there, but they have so many different instructors and sessions. So, um, but I took her workshop at Squam and then um, we're actually teaching together at this main workshop. She's going to be one of the other teachers who's teaching. Um, we're teaching at a gathering of stitches in Maine. I'm going to include a link to that workshop you're teaching in Maine um, in the description box. And pretty much everything you've talked about, I'm going to try, try to include as many links as possible because when I watch a video on YouTube, I'm always like, okay, they talked about something and now I've got to check it out. So I'm going to try to make it easy for you guys to um, link. But I'll yeah, so knitting too. and this hand sewing and it's just <laughs> so fun to make oh yeah so this is my most recent knit I think I'm trying to remember if I knit something oh I made a pair of socks for my son but then 
they got thrown in the wash and they shrunk and so those are gone okay, anyway you just have um, to make another <laughs> exactly so this is the pressed flower shawl and then which i uh, guess the pattern for i know good for you that's amazing <laughs> I love that this one you can do there's a cowl and there's a yes. sweater and there's a cardigan like and there there's a hat, a hat. yeah and I know. Socks. are there really <laughs> socks oh my gosh that's amazing and then this is uh oh no this is not ranunculus this is not ranunculus, is ranunculus. this is astragal um love it just the color is so nice on you it has this little water droplet motifs um this one um yeah i think Trying to remember if it was in Pom Pom or Making Magazine. Anyway, RIP both of those publications, by the way. Um, so yeah, anyway, I'll have to send you the link for that. But yeah, I love the, link, this, but the, the pattern really designer. Lovely. And I love the um the shape of the neck because a lot of the sweaters, they're just kind of so choky for me. I don't yeah, like I know. anything so like close to my neck. And yeah. I like the shape of this one. It's a little bit, you know, so I'm gonna have to copy so yeah. and that's reverse stock in it yeah and then i'm wearing my cleo skirt underneath and a uh alabama chan and top that i made um did I you get get into that also alabama chan and stuff yeah i took okay. a workshop with natalie chan and back in i don't know 2013 14 maybe and i've it been was pretty much obsessed with nice. it i'm only taking a break in the last couple of years because i got really back into knitting as well yeah um but yeah and i'm I am wearing my, I think it's Shifty by Andrea Maori. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a cowl, which is like Ooh, for people yes. who don't do shawls. And like, because I find yeah. shawls very cumbersome. It stays But on. I love, yeah, I love cowls and it's got that shape of a shawl. So I love this pattern. And it's you know, gorgeous. Oh, I you. love that purple color. Oh my goodness. It's beautiful. Yeah. So pretty. I loved knitting, I loved knitting this. So. Um, but yeah, it's so fun to make all the things. Yes. <laughs> you know, make everything. And it's, uh, I've been like encouraging people to actually get into some form of making, you mm -hmm. know, and whatever it is, just work with your hands because there's a direct connection from your fingertips um, to your mind. And it's like the whole connection. It's just, I always tell if my fingers are busy, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> no, a hundred percent. I, for me, a lot of it was during the pandemic and my kids were schooling at home. I couldn't really sew. And so knitting for me was the thing where it was like, I'm going to learn. I was like, I'm going to learn cables. I'm going to learn brioche. I'm going to learn socks. I was like, I'm going to do all these really hard things that I've seen people doing. Um, I had this Pinterest board called someday when I'm a knitting superstar that I would save things where I was just like, I will never be able to make this, but I just love it. And now it's amazing to me. It's like, I can make those things like, and it, you so learn wait, you, little. You literally just started knitting in 2020. Is that what you're saying? Like you no, didn't knit before? I knitted before then, but I was the sort of knitter where I would pull out like one project a year and I would have to reteach myself how to knit and purl. I was like, I couldn't even remember like how to cast on, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, I did go to a, a knitting retreat in 2017 that I think really helped like kind of boost my skills to the point where I didn't have to keep going back and like looking yeah. up like how to cast on a stitch. Um, so I had done, you know, I had done some knitting before the pandemic, but a lot of it was very, very basic. You know, it was like very simple, yeah. like I brioche just seemed like way beyond anything I would be able to do something like this you know with like mosaic knitting yeah. it's like I heard about mosaic knitting I was like I don't know how to do that socks just seemed like a whole other planet to me I was like I do not think I could ever do that so it was just you know things that I figured you know okay I probably could learn that if I had enough time and the pandemic was a good chance for me to just like really like buckle up and do that and I made like so many mistakes, but like making mistakes is like so good for your brain. And, you oh my know, God, like I teacher... always say that making, making mistakes is good. I even have a form topic on pattern review. Being a yep. beginner is fun because we make mistakes and we learn, yeah. you know, so don't be afraid to make mistakes. I love that. Yeah. That's how you like, I mean, that is how you over overcoming that challenge is such a good feeling when something is so easy to you. It's just like, what, you know, that's, boring you're not challenging your brain in any way 
Um, and I think, you know, it is important. I think there are some people who get into sewing and they choose a pattern that's so complicated. You know, they like a lot of aspects. They're like, oh, I want to make that. This is my thing. I'm going to make this. And then it's too hard, right? If you have something that has too many hurdles and it's too challenging, like that can be frustrating. You have to find that balance between like, okay, I'm learning things. I'm challenging myself. Yes, I can make mistakes, but I can figure it out. And the thing that just kills you and you throw it away and you don't want to do it ever again. So it's like, there is a balance there, right? Yeah. Like you don't want it to be all mistakes either because that is incredibly frustrating. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. Um, so I'm going to end this interview uh, for today, but I always want to end um, with something a little personal, but also very uh, impactful. So can you think of any um you know a tip or a habit you've incorporated into your life which has made a huge impact for you whether it's your personal life or your your made by ray pattern company or anything else something you'd like to share with us um yeah i am a big believer in habits you know kind of establishing habits especially i think for those of us who are self-employed or work yes. from home um you know i did have a studio, but I also did have to work from home a lot with kids and things happening, you know, in the home. Um, it's been really important to me. I have two. <laughs> uh, the first thing is I always make my bed. Like there's just something to me about like coming back to a bedroom at the end of the day where the bed is made. And I'm just like, it just makes me feel like kind of like put together. Um, that is like, I don't skip it. If I skip making my bed, it's like a off day. Something's wrong. Something's horribly wrong. Um, but then I think in this second habit kind of goes into that. The second thing I do is every day I get like legit dressed. Like I don't, it's not like sweatpants and throw a sweatshirt over my pajamas. Like I do try to like make an effort to like get dressed, choose my outfit. Like I love wearing things that like express myself. And I, when I feel like I've done that, I just, it's like a better day. It, it sort of sets this tone for me that it's like, okay, here I am, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to work. So run errands, go to the doctor's appointments, whatever. Um, but it's like, feeling that sort of like preparation. Um, and that does also create for me a work home boundary a little bit, you know, like this is like, okay, now you're going to work or, you know, you're dressed, your day is starting. So it adds like a little imaginary structure to my day that I think a lot of us who are self-employed or work from home have. Um, I feel like that's very common. I have heard that. And, um, and I started doing this when I quit my job and I decided to do pattern review full time. That was mm -hmm. probably 15 or so years ago. And um, I have an office here outside of home, but uh, for the first year I worked from home and I still got dressed. I still wore my trousers. I still had, um, I even put on lipstick, even though, mm -hmm. and I still get dressed. And this morning I came in and like all dressed up. Where am I going? Nowhere. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> but isn't and I always say semi say to myself that the reason I um I I sew is because I love to get dressed and I love clothes and um you know I went through a phase in which I'm like oh my god I just don't even want to bother but then you know I feel like for me also it's very similar that to have that work life balance I have to get dressed and go to work and then come home change into my pjs and then <laughs> do the things yeah yeah but that's that. that's great so make the bed which i'm gonna try to do more often because <laughs> i've heard that from multiple people that you you're on to something i'm gonna try to make <laughs> my bed and i gotta keep getting dressed uh yeah. for yeah. the for the day whatever it is um, yeah thank you so much this has been so lovely i had so much fun chatting with you and I hope for our um, viewers readers listeners uh, it gives you a little peek into Ray's life and her ethos and maybe you'll want to try one of her patterns and share with us write a review or if you already have her patterns um, make something show us take a picture write a review on pattern review post on Instagram tag her tag us I'll remove I'll put all of the links down below in the description box 
And uh, thank you for joining us today. Bye. Oh, enormous thanks, Deepika. It was a delight to talk to you as always. <laughs> so much fun.